the winning, winning, winning blueprint, blueprint presents. presents. <laughs> Welcome, you are in the lab room. I'm your host, Lou. Thank you for joining me. It's Wednesday afternoon, and I want to get right to some news. Yesterday, we talked about Tom Telesco, the GM or potential GM candidate for the San Diego Chargers, is being a front runner for that job. Of course, he's the Colts vice president of football operations right now, but I told you, I think the Chargers like him. They flew him back out to San Diego, and we knew that the San Diego Chargers wanted a GM first. We saw the dominoes kind of lining up. Someone finally knocked them all down. Tom Telesco is your man in San Diego as the new GM. And that's the first step. I said it yesterday. I'll say it again here. It's always your best move to get the GM first. And I think that that's a fabulous move on the part of the San Diego Chargers. Be anxious to listen to what Telesco has to say and and what direction he wants to see this Chargers team going into moving forward. And so that was something that happened uh, today and wanted to share that with you guys. As we continue to move on, though, something that caught my eye, it, it happened last night, or at least I caught wind of it last night, was the fact that defensive coordinator Rob Ryan was fired in Dallas. And right after the game against the Redskins, the season finale in which the Cowboys lost, and subsequently ended their season, Jerry Jones seemed agitated. Of course you would. You just lost again in a win or go home scenario at the end of the season for the second consecutive season. And so, yeah, there was a reason to be annoyed if you're Jerry Jones. And he kind of insinuated that heads were going to roll. I was really thinking of Jason Garrett when I heard that. The first name that popped into my head He's talking about Jason Garrett. And so I was expecting something maybe on Black Monday. But tell you what, Jerry Jones, to his credit, has always been a patient man. And so I said, even if he's not fired on Black Monday, does not necessarily mean that Jason Garrett is safe. It just means he's waiting to line up his ducks in order to make sure that when he does let go of Jason Garrett, the guy that he wants to replace him with is right there. There won't be a head coaching search if Jerry Jones decides to get rid of Jason Garrett. It's either going to be Jason Garrett or Candidate X. There won't be Jason Garrett and then we'll line up 17 guys and interview them. There's going to be one specific man in mind when he decides to hire someone if he were to fire Jason Garrett. But that's not what I was sent here to talk to you about today. That's not what the topic of issue is. Rob Ryan was fired, and that's more along the lines of who he was talking about. Maybe Jerry wasn't pleased with the defensive performance by the Cowboys in that season finale and probably wasn't really impressed with them all season long. What Jerry needed to keep in mind was that he was playing with a lot of guys that were backups. There were a lot of injuries to that Cowboys defensive unit all season long, and so they had to keep plugging guys in. And after you do that enough times, your defense is going to, it doesn't matter what side of the ball it is, defense, offense, special teams, it's going to start to erode after a while. You can't keep chipping away at the foundation and, and don't expect it to finally crumble at some point. That's what happened to the Cowboys' defense. Toward the end of the season, they gave up 30 points to the Eagles. They gave up some points to the Steelers. They gave up some points to the Redskins. They weren't able to really play defense good enough to get them into the postseason. But, the thing that really irks my nerves <laughs> with Rob Ryan is the fact that he's so cocky and arrogant for a guy that really hasn't had a top-notch defense. 
He's never coached a team with a defense that's went to the playoffs. His defense has never been good enough to get his teams into the postseason. And so his arrogance annoys me because it's fine if you're arrogant and you have an air of confidence about yourself and you've been getting it done every single year. Like his brother, you say what you want about Rex Ryan. He's got numbers, facts, and stats to back up his claims. Now, you may want to tell him to shut up because he talks too much, but a lot of what he's saying is the truth. His defenses are usually in the top five. You can't dispute that. You go back, you look at the numbers, you look at the records. They state that the Jets have been in the top five in defense, except for last year, or in the 2012 season, I should say. They've been in the top five for the most part. Never really getting out of the top ten for sure. And so Rex can boast about how good he's been as a defensive coordinator, and he really doesn't have the horses. That's not the same thing for Rob, however. His defenses have never been overly good, and he keeps getting chances. People just keep giving him opportunities off of the merit and the name of Ryan. And he's a good defensive coordinator, I think, to a certain extent. But for him to say, and this is what bugs me, this is what irks me about Rob Ryan, for him to say immediately after he's fired, oh, I'll be without a job for like five minutes. Really? Really, that's how you feel? You're that confident in your abilities? You'll be hired in five minutes? Shut up. <laughs> Keep your mouth shut. That's your problem now. You're not a head coach. You're a defensive coordinator. You want to know why you've never gotten a chance to be a head coach? That's part of the reason right there. You don't know how to keep your mouth shut. You talk too much. You're not the head coach. And you're causing problems for guys like Jason Garrett when the media comes shoving a mic in his face and asking him, hey, what do you think about the comments of your defensive coordinator, Rob Ryan? He doesn't even know what they're talking about. He's got to answer questions about this knucklehead running his mouth, saying things, and sometimes writing checks that you know that his you-know-what can't cash. And so frustrating when you're a head coach and your defensive coordinator can't keep his mouth shut. And that's part of the reason why he turns people off as a head coach. He's got the long hair. He doesn't keep up with the maintenance of himself. He looks like a slob sometimes, but yet he always has something to say. You know what? He's going to get another job. He's right. He's going to find more work. It probably won't be in five minutes, though. But he'll find more work. Someone will give him a chance. But honestly, is he that good of a defensive coordinator? Is he? I mean, you saw what he did in Cleveland. He was okay in Cleveland. He was solid. You saw what he did in Oakland. He was okay. He was solid. He was nothing great in either one of those locations. You've seen what he's done in Dallas. Wasn't great there either. What has he done to warrant the type of attention that he feels like he should be garnering. I don't know. That's why you have to just take a step back and, and get a chuckle out of Rob Ryan. <laughs> because I don't know where all this bravado and confidence is coming from. His defenses aren't that good to me. I, I just I, I just am not wowed by Rob Ryan as a defensive coordinator. And apparently neither is Jerry Jones. And so, Rob Ryan will be looking for employment. He'll find it. Someone will give him a job. You don't worry about who it's going to be. In his case, he's not worrying about when it's going to come. He's worrying about who and where it will be. A lot of people have been pointing to Rex out in New York with the Jets. I just can't see it happening because their egos are so big. First of all, Rex wants control of that defense. He's not going to turn the control of that defense over to someone else. So I think you can stop right there. And even if he were to bring his brother in, I just think that Rex is more aggressive than his brother. If you've ever watched a Rob Ryan coach defense, they don't blitz a lot. They're not a really overly aggressive defense. They like to play a lot of coverage. And if especially if you give him a dominant pass rusher, He's not going to blitz that off. If you don't have to, then you don't blitz. But sometimes I think he's overly conservative on third downs, which gives up first downs and allows drives to continue, and then you get points scored on you. So all I'm saying is Rob Ryan is conservative. Rex is the direct opposite. He's very aggressive. 
And so I don't think their coaching styles would mesh very well. So I don't know if that's going to be a landing destination or not, but I just found it funny that he was fired and the first thing out of his mouth wasn't, I want to thank Jerry Jones for the opportunity or I'm going to find more work or, you know, it's okay. I would fire myself too. You don't expect that from a guy like him anyway, but you would expect him to say something like, I was a little shocked by the firing, but, you know, you know, we didn't win. We didn't get it done. And so, um, I'm going to try to, you know, be better at my next destination. No, you're not getting that from him. What you got was, I'll be without a job for like five minutes. <laughs> Give me a break. <laughs> uh, something else interesting that I stumbled upon that I wanted to make mention of before I got out of here was someone stuck a mic in uh, Bill Cowher's face and asked him, hey, you know, what do you see in your future as far as coaching wise? And he said, hey. I see myself coaching again. I, I, I'm going to coach again. Interesting statements from an interesting man doing an interesting job right now. And the reason I say that is once you give a head coach who's been a head coach for a long time, as Cowher was for the Steelers for a mighty long time, or John Gruden, as he was a head coach for a while in the National Football League, once you give these guys a cozy job in a studio, or in Gruden's case, you give him a booth and you tell him it's all yours. Have at it. Once you get a comfy job in a studio and you're making good money, it's not going to be the money you're going to make if you become a head coach again. But it's enough money because, again, you've been a coach for so long, you should have money stashed away. And so money probably isn't your biggest worry at that time. You just want to spend time with your family, have more time to yourself. And you still want to be around the game you love. And so you're doing the thing that you love to do, which is talk football. And you're getting paid to do it. You're not having to put in the rigorous hours that you did when you were a coach. What I'm trying to say is when a coach gets a comfy job in a studio or in a booth, they realize, do I really want to go back to the monotonous, tireless working and inner workings of a head coach. Do I want to go back to the life of sleeping on the couch at the facility, not seeing my wife and my kids, sometimes two, three days at a time, the long road trips? Do I want to go back to that life, submerging myself in practice and in football and in my players and in my coaching staff? Do I want to go back to that? Because this is really nice. This is comfortable. This is nice. I see my family all the time. I really like this. It's easier, less stress. There always will be that itch that they feel like they got to scratch because you're a coach at heart and you want to coach football. But it's always hard for me to fathom guys who get these type of jobs going back into the workforce as a head coach because it's so much easier. And for guys like Gruden, like Cowher, who have already won a Super Bowl championship, that itch is a lot easier to scratch when you already have a Super Bowl championship. A guy like Andy Reid, he can't rest because he didn't have that hardware. He hasn't had that one season that can define him as a head coach. When you're a coward, I got a ring. I got the hardware. You're a Gruden, I got the hardware that I can flash that tells you I'm a Super Bowl winning coach. I got it done. And so there's nothing really left for you to prove unless you have something to prove to yourself. But to the naysayers, you tell them, hey, you go look at 2005 if you're a coward. You, you tell them, go look at 2002 if you're John Gruden. They can't say anything to you after that. For Andy Reid, though, there's not one season he can point to and say, I was a championship winner that season. You can't tell me anything. You can't take that away from me. And so you always wonder about those type of guys when they get a job in the booth. And so I don't know if Cowher will be back is what I'm trying to say. He says he's going to be back, and you have to take that at face value, but you got to know. When these guys get a job like Cower has, like Gruden has, it's so hard to walk away. And they, they sweeten the pot. They tempt you to stay. They don't want you to leave. They feel like you're a part of their network, and they feel like you're a big part of what they're trying to do moving forward, and so they don't want you to go anywhere. So if they got to sweeten the deal a little bit, they'll do that. I don't know. I don't know if Gruden will be back in coaching. I don't know if Cowher will be back in coaching. Their names surface every single year. And teams, I'm pretty sure, have put out feelers to see 
how interested they are in coming back every single year. But until they actually sit down and decide, hey, I'm ready to go back in full throttle. I don't know if these guys will ever be back as head coaches because the jobs that they have right now are so good. Why would you want to? Why would you want to go back and put that strain on yourself if you don't have to? Again, they're coaches at heart, and so they'll always be that itch. If that itch ever becomes greater than the amount of scratching that they're doing, they'll go back to coaching. But if that itch can be contained and relieved by the scratching that they have going on right now, they'll never go back to coaching. And that's going to do it for this program. Throw it up. It's a touchdown. It's a touchdown. Toss it up. One tackle on this quick extra point. The firing of Rob Ryan got me to thinking. Coaches are still not safe. And I remember I've, I talked about it on a previous program about just getting by Black Monday and really elevating your chances of retaining your services. It doesn't really matter what the capacity is. As you see, he's not a head coach. He's a defensive coordinator, and he was relieved of his duty. So it doesn't matter you know, what level you're at. Teams go back and they evaluate their coaches just as they do their players at the end of a season. And so sometimes it takes a little bit longer for them to make a decision. And in this case, Jerry Jones went back. He looked at everything that transpired over the season or the past two seasons since Rob Ryan has been added to that staff. And he says, look, he's a guy that's not worth the headache. I'm the only one in this locker room that can run their mouth whenever they choose. And Rob Ryan did too much of that, and he was relieved of his duties. And he wasn't backing it up with his play or his players' play on the field, and his coaching wasn't getting it done. So no one's safe. Guys are out there still wondering if they're going to be the head coach or the offensive or defensive coordinator or the special teams coordinator. Guys are out there still wondering if their job will be there tomorrow. That's a very valid question because you just never know what these GMs, what these head coaches, what these guys are thinking, what these owners are thinking. You just never know what these guys are thinking, what's going through their minds as they start to evaluate the process and feel like, hey, do we need to make a change here? Are you a part of this team's future moving forward? You just never know. And here was a prime example of it. We are one, two, two and a half weeks removed from Black Monday. And here we are talking about someone else being fired. It may not be done yet. Seven coaches being fired, I feel like that's a lot. And I don't know if any more will happen. But I tell you what, it may not be over with. We will see. Um, again, the sooner you get rid of your coach, the faster you can find a new guy to come in and start getting the ball moving on what you want to do moving forward. So I don't see any more head coaches being fired, but you just never know. And this Rob Ryan, even though he's not a head coach, him being fired lets you know that you just never know what could happen. You're not safe quite yet. And that's going to do it for this episode of In the Lab Room. Thank you for joining me on this Wednesday afternoon. Stay tuned today. Uh, I'll be posting up shortly the In the Lab Room lab follow-up. And today is the Oakland Raiders. They're the third team uh, in draft order for the 2013 draft. And so they're up next. And we'll be talking Oakland Raiders football, what they need to do moving forward, what happened in 2012, which set off a chain of events in the offseason, and what they need to do in the offseason to make this a better franchise and start to take those steps to become the franchise that they used to be. And so we'll talk about the Raiders. I'll be posting that here shortly. So keep your eyes peeled for that. There's many ways to contact the show, view the show. There's YouTube, there's Facebook, there's Twitter. There's the inbox. You know all of them. They're all predicated by in the lab room. You type that in, you'll find me. I thank you for joining me here on the program today. I always say it, and I'll say it again. Want to see you back here same time, same place. And as always, have a good one. Take care. Have a good one.